So last time we saw Master Chief, he was looking a little bit blue, looked more like a red versus blue character. But now that that gray paint has dried, we can peel off that tape and reveal all of our colors now. And at this stage, this is what Master Chief looks like now. Now obviously it's still very clean and the colors are way too bright and kind of out of proportion. So in this video, we're gonna talk about weathering and the huge difference that it can make on a statue or anything really. So let's get right into it. Now my first step in the weathering process is to add some silver scuff marks to the armor. And to do that, I'm just going to use some metallic silver spray paint and a little chip brush. Although I switched to a Q-tip later on down the line for a little bit more control. The technique is basically the same though. I just spray on a little bit of the metallic spray paint and then very gently and very lightly brush it on to hard parts of the armor. I like to hit all of the hard corners, a lot of the hard edges, because those are the spots that are most likely for the paint to have rubbed off and indicate kind of a more consistent wear. The wear and weathering that's gradually built up over time as the hard corners hit those edges and the paint gets scraped off in small pieces but it's usually those spots where the paint starts to fade first. Now this silver paint is very bright, but don't let that worry you. We are going to cover up and darken it in the following weathering steps, but we wanna do this first so that we make sure that happens. Otherwise the silver will be way too bright and you always wanna do your long-term weathering before your short-term weathering. Long-term weathering is like what I talked about, paint getting gradually roughed up and rubbed off over time. Short-term, short-term, short-term weathering Short-term short -term weathering is more like getting dirty out in the dirt or the mud or whatever. It's those things that happen over the day-to-day -day that you can wash off pretty easily, but it is frequently occurring. You can definitely overdo it at this step, so don't hit every edge, every hard corner. Just about, you know, my aim is about 30%. But I will do it to all of the pieces at least a little bit, hitting areas like the front of the chest a little bit more than the back, hitting the shoulders a little bit more than like the butt plate, for example, because there are certain pieces of the armor that see a little bit more action than others. And so those pieces are going to have significantly more wear than other pieces. Okay, so that was the long-term weathering. The short-term weathering consists of doing different colors of washes. We're going to start off with a black wash though. Now the black wash technique is very simple. It just requires a little bit of acrylic paint with some water, a sponge brush, and some paper towels. Now the trick is gonna be getting the mixture of paint to water correct. You don't wanna to use too little water and have your mixture be way too dark, but you also don't want to oversaturate it with water and just have your black wash essentially doing nothing. What works for me is usually about 50-50 paint to water, but the technique is very simple. I'll just brush on this black mixture right onto the armor. We're going to be specifically hitting the green parts and the gray parts of the armor because this black wash obviously won't do a whole lot over the black pieces of the armor. But we'll brush it on and then gently dab it off with a paper towel, whisking it off in random directions if we want like streaks or just dabbing it off if we want kind of a mottled dirt look. I'm only going to do half the chest here so you can kind of see the difference it makes. It definitely tones down the green as well as that silver that we put on earlier. You can also see the paint starts to collect in the hard creases in the corners of the armor. This is that short-term weathering where you might get dirty but then when you wipe it off with a towel or something you're going to hit and you're going to clean off most of those large open areas but the dirt and the grime stuck in those hard creases or those hard places to reach are going to stay there. So we want to try and emulate that with our weathering. I'll give a single pass like this to all of the armor pieces. And then afterwards, I'm going to use a brown wash instead of a black wash. And that just kind of adds a whole new layer of complexity to the paint job and the armor and the weathering when you start to mix different colors, just like you kind of get different shades of dirt. To show you guys how much the weathering makes a difference, here's a leg that has been weathered with the black wash only compared to a leg that has had no black washes, no weathering. And it's actually quite impressive how much the difference it makes. The green definitely looks different, which is why it's so important to remember that your paint shade may change during weathering, and you need to keep that in mind in selecting your color choice. When I was first putting on this green, I knew that it looked a little bit too light, but I also knew that it was gonna be weathered with some darker colors that would bring that shade of green down and really make it look accurate to Master Chief in Halo Infinite. Okay, one of the final steps of weathering for me is going to be airbrushing. So I've got some black paint loaded in the airbrush and I'm just kind of going to be hitting all of the spots that the black washes couldn't really hit or that I just missed over entirely. For example, I'm gonna be using the airbrush to fill in little circles on the knee and on the foot plates 
and kind of just filling in any deeply recessed areas that the black wash didn't really sit in that well and overall just kind of enhance the black wash. I am also going to be using the airbrush to tone down the gray parts of the armor. The black wash didn't work so great on the gray parts. It darkened them a little bit, but not enough to really make a difference. So I'm going to be using this airbrush to kind of close the gap between the undersuit parts. There are black pieces and gray pieces. I'm going to use this airbrush to kind of bring those closer together so the difference between them is not so drastic and so that it doesn't like hurt the eyes so much to look at. Now what I'm not doing is hitting every recessed edge, every hole, every valley. You don't want to overdo it here because then the whole thing starts to look a little bit too airbrushed and doesn't look very real. But touching up a few spots and darkening some other colors won't hurt. So guys, the Life Size Master Chief is almost finished. The last major hurdle we have is the visor. I've got a few different ideas, but I'm going to focus on the one that actually ended up working. But I'm going to fully document all my failures and different attempts as shorts instead. So that we can save time and focus on what actually worked in the tutorials. So thank you guys for watching. We're almost there. So stay tuned for the finale of the Life Size Master Chief. I can't wait.